Hi guys, welcome back to the Martin Crafting Table. This is Sierra, and I'm really excited to share this one with you guys. This was my first time using Infusible Ink by Cricut, and I absolutely fell in love with it. It's beautiful, vibrant. You definitely have to try it if you have not yet. It definitely changes the game. And I'm so excited to be making more with Infusible Ink. They have different colors. You can get the Cricut Infusible Ink Kit at Hobby Lobby, Michaels, Joann's. It's definitely worth a try. You have to try it at least once. Let's get right into it. So I already pre-designed everything in Cricut Design Space. I'm just preparing for cutting. I'm applying the Infusible Ink Sheet to the Standard Grip Mat. And as you can see right there, that happened because it touched my claiming hands. If your hands are sweaty or you have lotion, um, you want to make sure you don't touch that ink side because it will come off. Now I'm just going to insert the mat into the machine. All right, guys, it's ready to feed it into the machine and begin cutting. It's just measuring to make sure that there's enough on the mat. And now it's blinking at me because it's ready to start cutting. So I press start. And now it begins. Once the Cricut machine is done cutting, we're going to release that from the machine and we're going to remove the sheet from the mat. And I would recommend flipping the mat over to do that. Next, I'm going to be applying the infusible ink and I'm just going to film the test fabric for the process. And the fabric, it looks like this one, it comes with the kit, so you don't have to worry about buying an extra piece of fabric for testing. And I just heat press it per the guidelines um, on the website. I'll link that down below for the Cricut heat guide. It gives a lot of helpful information, so I do love that website. Since Infusible ink is heat activated. I'm just gonna let that cool down after preheating and then once I'm ready and it's cooled down I'm going to place the design down and then heat press The texture is going to be a little different It's thicker than normal vinyl and it's going to sound crackly which is fine and you can just use your fingers or tweezers for the weeding part and to remove those extra pieces you don't want in your project Infusible ink can bleed through and cause some bleeding, so I'm just going to use some regular old cardstock behind my piece to protect um, the surface behind it. Now my piece is ready for my design. It's cooled down, and you do want to put butcher paper on top of this. You want butcher paper to be, be between your design and your heat press. Again, I'm following the guidelines on the Cricut Heat Guide website, and I think I said it earlier, but I will link the link to that down below in the description box. And you can't see the numbers, but it's on um, the sun reflection is just making it really hard to see. And in the heat pressing process, you don't want to move it around. You want to be still so it doesn't smear your design. And you can peel this off while it's still warm. I was obsessed with this after I used it, so I definitely recommend anybody that has not used this yet and you're interested or been thinking about it, definitely go for it. It is beautiful and vibrant. The only downside is I don't think infusible ink would be as visible or vibrant on darker fabrics. But I'm really excited to do more infusible ink projects in the future. And I just followed the same process for my shirt and tote. And that is it, guys. Thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments your experience with infusible ink. See y'all next time.